We are back for another exciting episode of Building the Nantahala Retreat here in Western North Carolina. Today we're going to get the decking down on the second floor and we're going to set the ridge beam. Can you see the tongue, right? On the trailer? Thank you, good. You ever played that game Tetris? So that's what I call the truck shuffle, and it happens pretty often on these small mountain job sites. We just needed to get the trash trailer back here to load it up so we could touch up some of this grating. The backfill had settled about six or eight inches after a long weekend of heavy rain. While we still had this machine on site, I decided to unload this yellow pine 8x8 off of Jamie's truck because it weighed about 250 pounds. It has a thumb that allows you to clamp something between the bucket and the thumb. And it was going great until I did not realize that when you roll the bucket, it doesn't roll the thumb with it. At that point, I dropped the post on the back of Arlo's trailer and <laughs> I guess it's okay. Why are you breathing so hard? You've been driving track hoe. Well, I had to finish with that because mm. I'm not that good at driving track hoe. <laughs> well, okay. What I'm doing right now is I'm trying to make everything straight before we do plywood. You know, that'd be a bad thing to skip. Right. right. So uh, we're sliding all the bands. We're getting them braced. And you're taking phone calls. Getting a phone call here. Uh, we're making sure everything looks real nice before we even start. That's my wife. Oh, better take that one. Yeah, I'm going to answer this here. Just give me a... About a half an hour. Look at this. Look at his laser eye face. Oh, it's good. It's <laughs> real good. Blood sugar's low. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Got beard hairs in my mouth. Here Arlo and Jamie are cutting the rim board to allow the rafter to come down and contact the top of the wall plate. This is the only location where our floor joists and our rafter ended up conflicting for the same space. Once Jamie and Ray had the wall straightened and plumbed and also the rim board straightened, we could start installing our subfloor on this second floor framing. And if you missed it in our previous video, this is Advantech X Factor, which is new from Advantech and it will be available later this year. Since our floor joist framing was a little wacky due to the rafters coming down on the same wall plate, we had to cut a few of these sheets that ran long because the layout from the end of the house wasn't necessarily the regular centers. Hey, you know, this kind of looks like grape jelly. Yeah. Lick it. <laughs> I wonder what it tastes like. Lick it. So whenever I have a low blood sugar, I can just... Dude, you got a whole... Lick it. Lick it. <laughs> One thing I've personally noticed about using this Advantech X Factor is that it's not as slippery. It has the same texture on it as the zip wall and the zip roof, which gives you pretty good traction. With about half of the subfloor installed, we decided to build a railing around this stairwell opening. And the reason we didn't build it around the entire perimeter is that we would immediately have to tear it off as we started installing the rafters. While the other guys finished putting the subfloor down, I decided to go ahead and do some math and start cutting the ridge post that will hold up our ridge beam on this house. The section I'm cutting here will actually be inside of a wall, but we just need to put up a post to start with and we'll frame the rest of the wall later. I'm also making it three and a half inches wide so that the three and a half wide double ply LVL will sit completely on it. The yellow pine post will be used at the edge of the loft, and that's because there's no wall there, there'll just be a post. And we don't really need an 8x8 for strength, a 6x6 or even a 4x4 would hold it up. The 8x8 is just so it looks beefy, and that's just the way I like it to look. It's funny that buying a post like this is actually kind of hard sometimes, and that's because the big box stores and most of the lumber yards sell posts, but they're mostly pressure treated, and we don't need a pressure treated post because we're putting it inside. We had to special order this post and then go pick it up an hour from the job site so that we could have it. Round two of moving this post with the machine went a lot smoother and that's because I went ahead and rolled the bucket out as far as it would go before I clamped it in with the thumb. That way there was no way I could accidentally cut it loose by rolling the bucket. For anyone who's watching, I would not grab a nice finished looking post with a machine like this, but the idea on these mountain homes is actually to make it look rusty. And for that reason, sometimes we'll take timbers and drag them through the driveway and hit them with chains just to dent them up and make them look old. So in this case, it wasn't a problem. With both of our ridge posts now up on the deck, we could stand them, fasten the bottom, then we plumb them and brace them really well because this ridge beam is really heavy. Oh, 
gosh, I got a splinter. Oh, man. Whew. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wait. That's just... <laughs> never mind. Metal fingers. <laughs> it's getting bad already. I don't know where this guy comes from. <laughs> A little detail here is we're setting the face of this post flush with the side of the floor joist, even though the floor joist will get a half inch of sheetrock on it later. What we'll do is stick a bullnose out over top of the drywall, enough to where we can actually have a half inch or quarter inch trim up under the bullnose. Hey, uh, did you put that post the right end up? What do you mean? Well, I mean, you gotta, everybody knows you gotta stand the post up the way the tree was growing with the top is the top and the bottom's the bottom. Dude, I have no idea which you way. You didn't know that? Especially no. like in Japanese construction. Good they thing use we're tons in of post and North beams. Carolina. <laughs> it's I I don't know. They actually I don't know if it's like a disrespect to the tree or something like that. If you put it upside down, maybe I don't know. I don't really know. I'm just I totally just I could be making that up totally. But well, it, are but, you? <laughs> I don't know. But it, I mean, how do you even know? What? But it could be true though. Well, so I, I really don't know which way was up. Well, I think it's good. I think it's gonna be good. Okay. Yeah. Well, since we can't really tell, I don't know, but it looks like, see the grain pattern right there? Yeah. Where it looks like maybe the tree was belled out at the bottom and that was, you know, cross section of the way the grain was growing. And I think that it actually is standing vertically the way it was. Perfect. I'm pretty sure. Because we're not taking it down either way. <laughs> Arlo, buddy, it's your time to shine. Rafter yeah, time. We'll, we'll start cutting. Yeah. All right. He's got, he's got the diagram, the Arlo diagram right there. <laughs> Shows you exactly what's going to happen. Exactly. That's it. About 50 times in a row. <laughs> oh geez, oh geez, okay, all right. To measure and cut these rafters, Jono and Arlo are referencing the short point of our top cut to the short point of the bird's mouth along the bottom edge of the rafter. Here we're cutting the ends of these rafter tails down to five and a half inches, which is the same as a two by six. Reason being is that we're gonna use a two by six sub fascia board, so we want it to be approximately the same size. That's, you want me to mark that five and a half on there for yeah, you guys? Yeah, it'd be good to have a little tick mark. Yeah, I'll do that. I can do that. And then we'll just do this five and a half. So that's what that is. We needed to scaffold up two bucks, which is 10 feet at each one of these ridge posts to set the ridge beam easily. Then it was time to take a measurement for the actual ridge beam. Did you already measure the ridge? Ridge beam, yeah. Yeah, you know I me. Mean? There's nothing against you, Eric, but I mean, they're kind of pretty <laughs> expensive, bro. Don't worry, I, I got it. <laughs> All right, I don't know what your please number was. Please tell me it's different. Please tell me it's different. Please tell me it's different. Uh, it's different. I would go 266. <laughs> What'd you put it? What'd you say it was? 265, three quarter. That's all good. <laughs> I mean, I'd go 266, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> 265, three quarter. So, this is a 23 foot long LVL. We're gonna do the push and switch to get it up there. You guys might not know what that is. It's a completely genius move, so I'll show you how to do it. Okay. Okay. All right, so, all right. You can go as far as you can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Hey, if... Now you switch. I'm gonna push, you switch. You switch in front of me. Switch in front of me. See, see now I switch. That's genius. Golly, that's going over top of my truck. Please don't hit my truck. <laughs> okay. There it is, one LVL coming right up. All right, now y'all gotta pull the bottom out a little bit there. So that we can install this ridge beam by hand and not need a crane, what we're doing is installing them one ply at a time. We've had some where we couldn't do that and we needed a crane, but in this case we can. We're also laying the rafter locations out on this and marking it before we stand it up so that we don't have to get back up there and waste time doing that later. So for any of you wanting to learn more about structural things like how a house goes together and its design, this section of ridge beam is not load bearing even though we use this big beam, we're just using it to match the rest of the ridge beam which is load bearing. The reason this section isn't is because it has rafter ties, they're the floor joists that keep the lower walls from spreading so there's no way the ridge could drop, it basically has no weight on it. Our rafters here are also yellow pine 2x12s 20 feet long and they're heavy. We're aligning the heel of our rafter cut with the bottom of this beam, then letting the rafter stick up, and that allows for ventilation for our ridge vent. A note is that these are overkill as far as structure goes. Two by eights would have been plenty strong, but there has to be 11 and a half inches for the insulation to go for this roof. So you have to use two by 12s to use conventional insulation and then leave that air gap above the insulation. 
Once we had a flat spot cut on the top of our gable wall that we framed last week, we were able to set this last bit of ridge beam. And this section actually is load bearing because there's no rafter ties or collar ties to keep the outside walls from spreading. You know, see, I'll tell you a short story. Most people know when you're driving down steep mountains with trailers and heavy loads, you have to gear down your truck so you don't burn up your brakes. That's pretty common sense. Well, I did that on my way out with the trash trailer. It was loaded, but I forgot to take it out of second gear for the whole rest of my drive home. <laughs> and like right when I was about to get off the exit, and this is like a 30 minute drive on the highway, I looked down at the dash and I noticed my truck was running about 6,000 RPMs. <laughs> And I had driven all the way to town in second gear. You must have a good quiet running engine and hey, I noticed it's, that. It's a Hemi. Man, it was just, <laughs> just singing along. It didn't care. It About 400 fine. degrees. Hey, look, it doesn't even have a red line. Okay. okay. It goes all the way to seven or eight, no red line. One thing we're doing as we're setting the rest of the rafters that's not super visible in the video is we're continually siding the ridge beam because these rafters can apply a lot of force to the side of the ridge and actually bow it one way and the other. We're also alternating sides that we're installing rafters to avoid the ridge beam getting bowed back and forth and have a little less struggle. With a vaulted ceiling like this, it's actually pretty critical that the heel of your cuts meet exactly on your beam at the corner of your wall plate because that's the surface your drywall will install on. If you have a flat ceiling below this, it really doesn't matter as much. For that reason, Jamie and Jason have a sawzall if we need to make fine adjustments to the rafter cut so it fits nicely to the beam. And they also carry some shims in case the rafter is a little too short. What you do is actually space it out from the ridge beam just a little, in essence, making it longer. Next we got going building these overhangs and this is what I call ladder style overhangs. They don't actually lap into the roof system because they're only a foot. And this will match the rake ends which are about a foot overhang. You can't do much more than that on a steep pitch roof with eight foot walls because your overhangs will actually get down into your windows. This section that we left the rafters out will have a dormer. That means it'll have a full height wall here with a window, and that will give a lot more usable floor space in this area in the loft. This dormer has a lower pitch shed roof that's a 312 pitch, and that's the minimum pitch that I try to do if you're gonna have shingles on it. They could have at least picked a lot that had a good view. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's all right, but I've, I've seen better for sure. So one thing we're doing is letting these lower pitch rafters come in lower than these 12, 12 rafters. You can see it's about four inches difference and that's on purpose so that this ridge cap shingle won't get into this lower pitch roof and have to make some weird transition from a steep pitch onto this shallow pitch. And we, we did that one time and it did not work good. So from then on out, we started letting our shed dormer rafters come in lower. What's up there, Skipper? What are you doing? <laughs> Checking out the view. Uh, it's pretty epical. It is. I didn't mention it before, but we will have to tack on little blocks to the side of these lower pitch rafters to match the little peak that sticks up higher on the other side of the ridge beam. Within just a few minutes, we had these rafters up and we could start to build the sections of wall that connect the two different roof lines. And for these, we're just using two by four and that's just to save a little space since this loft isn't huge. Hey, thanks for building with us today. I hope you've really enjoyed it and that you've learned something. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a thumbs up and a comment that helps YouTube know that we're putting out good content they should recommend to other people. Have a great one.